And that's the main difference with the younger men, because like I said, you know, I, I was dating that guy and he and I met on Tinder and that's where our relationship started. So I had dated other guys previous to him and they all had one thing in common. They all wanted the pleasure just for themselves. They didn't want to please you. They didn't care about you. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to eat you out or eat your ass. They didn't care about that. Right. Whereas an older man, that's exactly what they like. And they get hard doing that. And that's just like the most amazing thing in the world to me. Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy, the number one sugar dating podcast in the world where we pull back the curtains on the good, the bad, and Lily. The shocking. The absolutely shocking, shocking stories of mm-hmm. sugar dating. And even though we do have a guest today, but we do need to explore some things with Lily. So we'll get to those throughout oh, the really? show. She's had a lot of shocking stories, but we can't get into too many because I've got a, a really fun guest today that I could uh, do my own episode right about you, now. You, you could, and we're going to, you know, we might have to do a double episode today. I don't know. I don't know if we have time for it, but probably not. Anyway, Lily, she's back on the market. Yeah. And she is actually, you've downloaded some new apps and, and websites you've been trying. Yeah, so my other situation ended, and it was kind of a little bit of a roller coaster up and down there for a minute. He actually wants to reconcile, but I mm, I don't really see it happening. I just don't see us ever being on the same page. And so, you know, I got back on seeking, and I even opened my goddamn tinder account after oh, six man. months what, of not being on there because what would you do there? that because i was just i don't know i was like let's see what's going on on in the tinder world yeah oh it's it's a circus well you've met some really nice people we had a, a zoo a listener of the show who reached out and it was really good timing for him and we've spent some time together with him he's a he's a great guest a sugar daddy yep yep that was a lot of fun so you signed up on millionaire matchmaker you're getting yeah, so- lots of hits off of that I forgot that way back in the day, I was told that I should explore some of the other sugar sites just so we had a point of reference and we could kind of compare Mm -hmm. apples to apples. And um, yeah, I signed up for Secret Benefits and I signed up for Millionaire Match. Yeah. And I'm not too impressed with Secret Benefits at this point. I I don't know. I want to ask our guest later if she's familiar with it. Mm -hmm. But Millionaire Match has been pretty good. I've gotten a lot of messages of people who seem legitimate and seem at least worthy of maybe. Yeah. You know, I signed up, I wanted to try different sites. So I just out of doing research, I signed up for secret benefits and I was getting tons of messages. I never responded or paid anything. uh, And then I just kind of let it go. And then I found out that my, one of my current sugar babies is on there. So that was kind of interesting. I haven't asked her how it's going, but obviously uh, she's out there. Yeah. I'm curious as to what she thinks of it because I haven't really been too impressed with it. It's one of those weird apps where I think they want you to just message the gentleman and then they profit off of it by if the guys want to read your messages, they have to pay tokens. Yeah, but then once you pay, then you can message them for free the rest of the time. I, I oh, read. like a subscription? So it's like, yeah, so it costs you three or four bucks to message them. And then after that, you can continue messaging them. So I started looking at it. It wasn't too bad. The, the concept was a little foreign to me at first, but I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll start messaging some girls on there and try it out. Well, here's what I do like and I don't like so far. I hate on seeking that it there's not an app. And I hate on secret benefits that there's not an app. You just literally have to open. Well, it's because you have an Apple f- phone. Yeah. iPhone. And Apple takes outrageous chunks out of their fees. So they can't afford uh, to offer the app because they demand 30% revenue, or at least they used to. Okay, I'm well, sure they do. Millionaire Match actually has an app and it's pretty user friendly. Mm-hmm. So that's a perk so far. Okay. Well, speaking of experience on these dating apps welcome jennifer Hello. to the show you now you are a sugar baby who 
you're 26, I believe. 25. Oh, you're 25. 25. I jumped yeah. ahead a little bit. And I talked to you just briefly. You said you have been a sugar baby since pretty much it was legal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, since the day I turned 18. The day, <laughs> I, So you signed up the day you turned 18? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. How did you know about it? Well, I've always been intrigued by older rich men. And then one day I realized I was actually getting ready to go to college. And I realized, you know what? Why am I going to waste my time with these boys when I can make money off of it and actually enjoy the experiences? And so I went on there. It was my birthday's in July. And so I signed up right before school started. And it just kind of went off from there. And I thought, you know, this is exactly for me. This is meant for me. And so I just stayed doing that for years. Tell me about your very first sugar baby experience. What was that like? Were you nervous? You were apprehensive, fear of the unknown? I wasn't nervous. I was ready. I was very ready. At 18, you were ready. I I felt very ready. I felt like this was my moment. Yeah, but all these old men, this is quote unquote because I'm one of these old men, are starting to hit on you. Mm -hmm. These people are older than your father. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) the first one was actually in his 60s, early 60s. Uh Uh-huh. There's a guy checking out your car right now. Yeah, it happens. Oh, actually, there's a whole crowd. (laughs) (laughs) I I did drive the yellow Lamborghini to to the podcast today. It gets a lot of attention. Yeah. Hey, I want to back it up just a minute. So you said you were ready to date older the minute you turned 18. Did you date like in high school or... In high school, well, my whole life was very school oriented. Mm -hmm. Like I really didn't think about dating or what a regular person thinks about in high school. I was very, you know, like I need to get into this school and I need to get this scholarship and stuff like that. So I actually never really, I mean, of course I like messed around in high school, but it was never anything like serious or I never dated anybody or anything like that. An official boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So you never really have had an age appropriate boyfriend? Well, there was one which I actually took a break from being a sugar baby for, and I moved to a different state for this person. Oh, and then, wow. Yeah, and so now I'm actually back in the game for the last, like, month and a half I've been back on. Oh, because this was recent. Yeah, this is the, recent. The yeah. civilian relationship. Mm-hmm. Now, did he know about the sugaring? He knew that I was a sugar baby prior to meeting him, and so he was very okay with it as long as I didn't continue it during our relationship, cool. which was fine with me. I'm always terrified when I start dating a civilian that they'll find out and be judgy. Yeah, no, no, I get that too. But thankfully, I've never, I mean, with him, it wasn't like that, thankfully. He was very understanding. He actually wanted to hear the stories. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about this first arrangement. This guy was in his 60s? Yeah, he was in his early 60s, and he worked in the music industry, and he was into being dominated by a woman. And, and you were comfortable doing this at I, 18? Yeah, oh, I've, I felt like that was exactly what I should oh be doing. Goodness. And so what I did was a week prior to that, I was just studying. I was watching these videos and watching these techniques and really trying to get it down to make sure that when the moment came, I wasn't like, oh, what do I do now? So yeah, no, I got really prepared for that. And he said, don't bring anything. I have every toy you can think of. I thought, okay, great. Well, I just need to bring myself. And I get there and he's a very normal man. You know, he's older and he he wasn't bad looking, but he wasn't like the best looking. And I was okay with that. And he shows me the bedroom and it's the, I remember the first thing I remember seeing was it looked like a dentist chair, but it was a sex chair where you could like tie someone up and you know so he had a sex room oh yeah yeah sex rooms he opened the closet and there are just these boxes like labeled boxes of different types of toys just his last name gray think of (laughs) (laughs) oh gosh yeah but i thought okay well you know he has all this stuff Uh, thankfully i had looked up a lot of the stuff and i had like gone to a sex shop and everything before that so i really did my research and when i get there i thought Oh, maybe when I get there, like, he won't want me to go all the way out, right? But no, that's exactly what he wanted. And so we went at it, and I put, the first thing I remember putting on him was, like, a blindfold, because he was very into not knowing what was coming or when it was coming. So I did the blindfold, and then I told him to sit on the chair, and I was like, well, 
I need to start strong, but not too strong. So then I just sat on his face and I thought, well, this probably is a, way, a great way to start. And indeed it was. And then I guess the part that was the most interesting because I had never done it before was when he asked me to fuck him with the strap on. And so I thought, okay, I've been practicing these movements at home. I should get this. And so a I little, did. We're I gonna did. do pegging on the first date. <laughs> wow. I'm assuming you weren't a virgin. No, no. Can I ask how old you were when you lost your virginity? I was 18, actually. Same. Yeah. Huh. So you had recently lost your virginity, yeah. and that just opened up Pandora's yeah, box. Everything. For better yeah. saying. <laughs> Wow. Mm -hmm. So the person you lost your virginity to, was that like someone age appropriate? Yeah. Yeah. They were like in their early 20s. So I guess that is that age appropriate? Sure. When you're 18? Yeah. Yeah, Right. I mean, it's yeah. It's legal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My goodness. So I can't believe how you just jumped right into this Mm -hmm. because at 18, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how not to get a boner in class. Right. I mean, it's just... I don't know if the different things were in my mind and then I had all these other school pressures and this and that, and you just fell right into the dominatrix role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I I did my fifties and I don't know that I've ever seen a strap on in person. I have one in my closet. No, well now I bought one after that. I was like, you never know when it's going to come up again. And it has come up quite a a few times. Tool of the trade when you're a dominatrix. Lily, has Mm -hmm. any guy asked you to peg him or have Mm. you ever done that? No, I've never been asked. Mm. Hmm surprisingly wow but i don't a lot of guys actually like that it i don't know if i could do it well it it hits the prostate which Mm -hmm. obviously is where the sperm and everything begins so it massages that and it there there is some sensations there i i'm talking like i know i don't i've never been pegged but i've seen videos they also (laughs) sell special toys that are Mm -hmm. specifically for the prostate so they're not shaped like a dildo they're shaped exactly like where it's supposed to hit and stuff like that yeah Mm -hmm. wow okay so a lot of men do very educational (laughs) episode for me find that very pleasurable i've got the 24 25 25 year old (laughs) teaching me a thing or two and i'm twice her age yeah okay all right i'm open to it so were you more excited about the role that you were playing or the financial part or just the combination? What was your motivation here? You know, I really think, honestly, I could have done that whole night. He paid me for two hours ahead of time. Like that was what his plan was. He said 300 the hour. And I thought, okay, that sounds fine. So for $600 he Mm -hmm. gave you. Yeah. And then out of those whole two hours, he only lasted 45 minutes. And he was like, okay, I'm done. He's like, I'm done for the night, but that was great. I'd love to see you again. But at the end of the day, I went home. And even if I wouldn't have had those $600, I think I would have been just fine. You had a nice smile on your face. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So were you giving all the pleasure? Did he reciprocate? So that one was purely me to him. Okay. Right. I mean, except when I sat on his face, I guess, which was (laughs) I mean, I enjoyed it, right? Right, I'm sure he enjoyed it. But more than anything, it was me giving him the pleasure. The way he explained it was he, in his daily, you know, in his job and everything, takes so many decisions that he wants to just not think about anything when he gets home. So this was just a nice release for him and that he doesn't have to think about, make decisions. You control the situation Mm -hmm. and he follows. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Interesting. One of his things that he made very clear was that the whole time I had to be in stilettos. Mm-hmm. And, and you're a tall girl already. You're five tall, nine. Girl, yeah. And he was not tall at all. Wow. So he was very into that aspect. And he asked me to like step on him with the heels on his back, but to the point where like I would leave red marks because of how hard I was stepping on it. But he was into it. So I was into it. Well, I wish Amy was here, my other co-host. She loves this stuff. <laughs> I mean, exactly. She, mm-hmm. you're describing things that she per- loves to participate in and, mm-hmm. and talks about it just like you do with yeah. almost joy. Yeah. I mean, it's just so fun. Or like the other one that he was into was wax play. I had never done that. I didn't even know what that was until I met him and saw and, what he and, was into. And what did that consist of? So it's pretty much you grab like a a candle or the wax of a candle. So they do sell special ones for that type of clay, but it's really hot, hot wax that you pour on him, like on his back or 
you know, everybody has a different spot, but he particularly liked it on his back. And so you just let it dry. And during that moment, I guess it's supposed to be very intense. And so he very much enjoyed that. Hmm. So how long did this arrangement last? I guess he he just did a PPM, right? Pay Mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, I saw him maybe like six or seven times after that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was traveling a lot for work. So it was maybe like once a month or once every other month. Mm -hmm. Can we ask what industry he was in? He was in the music industry. I didn't know oh, you did say that all those like records in his house, but mm-hmm. I didn't know who any of those <laughs> people like, were. I was yeah. like, oh, these are right, older right. groups. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this. When you date somebody and it's that big of an age gap, do you not feel like you're with your grandfather? No, if anything, I feel even more alive than ever. Even, oh, I, God. I mean, it feels- I'm going to introduce you to one of my <laughs> guys that tried to love me, but he was too grandfatherly for me. Did he look good like a grandfather or was he just? Yep, he looked like a grandfather, <laughs> but he was very frisky. He would Ooh. love you. Yeah, no, I'm all about, I'm always ready to go all time of the day, all like all the time. But I've noticed that my new recent desire I guess in these men is the men with the gray like hair on their beard or like gray hair in general oh he has white hair lately oh I that's even better right oh gosh you know I'm playing matchmaker (laughs) this is so it's funny you say that because when I was married I shaved all the time because I always wanted to continue looking young Mm -hmm. and even after I got divorced I thought well I need to look as young as possible so I always shaved. And then one day I started letting my beard and my mm-hmm. uh, sideburns grow out and there was gray and it freaked me out. So I shaved them oh, no. and I didn't <laughs> finally grow a beard until 2020. Mm-hmm. So like three, you know, a, few, a few years ago, that was the best thing ever I, I did. Yeah, I, I let the gray come out. All of a sudden I started getting more attention from women and right. more compliments. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? I didn't do this earlier. I was so afraid of being gray. Mm-hmm. But we had a guest a long time ago. She's from Dallas. And she says, you know, if they don't have a little gray in their beard, they're too young for her. I think that might just have to be my new phrase. Yeah. I love that. She yeah. loves the He's, silver foxes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And she's about they're your great. age, too. They're fantastic. Well, there's one thing that I've particularly noticed in these men. The older men, right, that we're playing with on these sites are all older and so they all are about pleasuring right they get off on pleasuring the woman the majority of these men right you know what that is true I've i that as well. and i told one of my sugar babies that the other day i said you always pleasure me and it's great but then you never let me reciprocate and i find great joy and pleasure myself mm-hmm. out of doing that like seeing you in ecstasy, seeing you climax and mm-hmm. seeing you, you know, your eyes roll back in your head and squirming. I love that. But if you deny me that, then I'm, I don't feel very fulfilled, even though I did just get off and it feels amazing. I don't feel completely fulfilled mm-hmm. with the whole sexual experience. And that's the main difference with the younger men, because like I said, you know, I, I was dating that guy and he and I met on Tinder and that's where our relationship started. So I had dated other guys previously. To him and they all had one thing in common they all wanted the pleasure just for themselves they didn't want to please you they didn't care about you mm-hmm. they didn't want to eat you out or eat your ass they didn't care about that right whereas an older man that's exactly what they like and they get hard doing that and that's just like the most amazing thing in the world to me okay so i have to ask you this because it's come up in my experience a couple of times well several times you're dating primarily older men 50s 60s 70s um, like 40s and over. 40s and mm-hmm. over. Have you dated men like in their 60s and 70s quite a bit? Um, Just, I mean, a good amount. I would say it's yeah. like maybe like 60, 40. Okay. 40 being Here's the- my question. Have you encountered a lot of older gentlemen with ED problems, erectile dysfunction? Oh, this is where it's going to get good. Yep. So my favorite. Which actually is a very common mm-hmm. you know we yeah. we, we yeah. did an episode with dr sex fairy and i've repeated this statistic many times but 20 percent of men in their 20s suffer with some kind of erectile dysfunction and it goes up 10 percent a year so 
half of the men in their 50s have, have some issues mm-hmm. there. 60% of the men in their 60s and 70% of the men in their 70s. So it's a very common issue. It worries me a little bit because I'm thinking, oh, am I going to be one of those categories? Mm-hmm. But so far I'm not. Yeah. Thank goodness. Well, it's, but, it's a little bit heartbreaking, but what I've noticed is many men, if they're open to acknowledging it and seeking treatment, they can come up with solutions. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We have yeah. so many options nowadays. Well, mm-hmm. when I started in this industry, my family is from a border town, not too far from here. So they get a lot of medication from down there. And my mom used to sell Viagra at her job. Like that was her <laughs> side thing. She would bring it from her Mexico. side hustle. Yeah. Nice. I, I remember being at high school and like the money she gave me to go to the movies was her Viagra money. Like I knew, you know, she had just made a sale. I was like, great, awesome. I can go to the movies. Mm-hmm. Your mom was a drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that was her thing. And hey, I got some little blue pills right here. Yeah. And she and my dad would test these pills before they sold them to make sure that there was, you know, it was guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And so one day when I started getting into this industry, I was like, you know what? I should carry some Viagra with me. So for the first like three, four years, I just always had Viagra on me because I never wanted these men to feel like, you know, they couldn't like if it, and I think maybe in the whole time, like three men, you know, we got to it and they were having issues and I was like, you know what, let me help you. I can fix this. And it did. And then, you know, well, how long does it take to activate? There were two different kinds that I was using. There Mm -hmm. was like the pill one. And then they also had a liquid one, which was like a little jelly pack. And that one was instant. Like the moment they sucked it up, maybe like two minutes later, they were hard. Really? So it really depended on how fast they wanted it to, you know, hit. You you got a little extra with you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, but you were saying, and I just remembered so probably like my best moment as a sugar baby was in the last three weeks. Okay. I had just gone back on the website. And when I got back on the website, I was really scared because when I had tried canceling it the first time when I was with this partner, I really thought he was like for life, like that we were going to be together forever. So I was like, oh my God, did I delete the whole account? Thankfully, I did not. I just deactivated it because my account says, you know, the year that I've been on there and everything. And I think a lot of people feel comfort. When they see that, that you've been there for a while. Yeah, I think yours says 2018, right? Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I like to see something that's a little bit aged because that shows me that you haven't been kicked off. You're not a scammer Mm -hmm. because scammers come and go. Mm -hmm. But if I see your account is four, five, six years old, actually, I I prefer that. I'm like, oh, I'm talking to a real Mm -hmm. person here. Yeah, yeah, me too, definitely. And so... I, you know, I put together my profile, I updated the pictures and everything, and I left everything else the same. It was just the pictures that I changed. And right away, you know, all these men start messaging me. I'm like, okay, well, what do I want right now in this moment? And there was this one man who messaged me from and he was like, hey, I go to Arizona for business at least like once every other week. And, you know, like I would like to talk to you and meet you. And I was like, okay, great. And he shares his pictures with me. And this is when I realized that that that's what I was into. He had the whole gray hair, gray beard, but he was 38 years old. He is like probably one of the youngest men I've seen from the website. And immediately he goes, I will fly you out right now. I was like, ooh, like I've been offered that before. But before when I was younger, like 18, 19, I never accepted that because I thought, oh, that's like, you know, big commitment. (laughs) <laughs> that but, is a big commitment. Yeah, but now well, was, it can be dangerous. You yeah, could not you just be know. compatible. Mm-hmm. There's so many things that could go wrong. I just got asked to go to Vegas for the weekend, and I'm like, go, oh, go, I, I just go. Don't know. She's so, debating. I oh, no, go, go. After well, I came back from this experience, I'm like, I will never say no again to anything. Okay, like, you I, just <laughs> talked her into it. Yeah, tell, tell us. I okay. need to know. So he offered me that and I said, oh, I was like, well, let's talk a little more. And then, you know, depending on how it goes, I'll, I'll see. And he goes, okay, that was on a Wednesday and we were like FaceTiming and stuff. And then we FaceTimed that night and he just looks so precious on FaceTime. I mean, I just wanted to, you know, eat him up. And so he goes, well, what are you doing this weekend? I was like, nothing. He goes, well, do you want to come to? I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's go. So in that moment, he booked me my ticket and he goes, do you want to come on Thursday and leave Monday, Friday and leave Monday? Like whatever days you're comfortable with, we will do. So I said, okay, let me leave Friday night. 
and come back Sunday night. And so I thought, you know, that that will give us enough time together. And I get there. And on my way there, he's texting me. And he's sending me these pictures. But I can't see the picture. So I didn't ask what the picture was. And then I landed. And I guess he had, like, a friend who owns a private jet that they use often. And so he was tracking my flight on this system, right? And he was sending me pictures of it as if I understood what it was, but okay. And I walk out through the doors of the airport and he's pulling up in that exact moment. It was like he knew exactly when I had landed, which he was looking for, right? Uh huh. He picks me up in his M4 and he opens the door as he's, you know, in the car. And he looks exactly like I thought he would. I mean, I, I think I was so excited in that moment. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be such a great weekend. And it was perfect. I had told him that the moment he was ready to go, because I'm a very sexual person, just always ready to go, right? Especially if you're attractive. What's your astrological sign? Leo. Oh, yep. Yeah. And so- <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, and so I told him, I said, you know, the moment you're ready for me to blow you, I was like, pinch my tit. And like, I'll, you don't even have to say anything. Just go for it, right? <laughs> like 15 minutes a, in. A, a guy absolutely <laughs> loves, you know, a sign. Yeah. And that's a perfect sign. I thought it was great. Like, just show me a sign you're ready. And 15 minutes in, nothing. He hasn't pinched my boob. And I'm like, at this point, I'm getting upset because I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, why do not you want me to blow you? And... I asked him, I said, you know, why haven't you pinched me? And I tried moving his hand on my boob. (laughs) And then he goes, well, I just need to be respectful. He's like, I need to make sure that you understand that I'm not going to do anything unless you want me to do it and all of this and all that. I'm just like, just go crazy. Like, you can do whatever you want to me. (laughs) Wow. Oh, also, this is really important to know. So this is the first man that I had gotten together with from the website from my previous relationship when that ended. But in my relationship in the last two years, there was no sex, right? In my actual relationship with my partner. Why? He was addicted to porn. And so sex didn't feel as good for him anymore, right? So we went from having sex 10 times a day to nothing. Yeah. So that was another reason why I was like, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, spend my life there. And so I hadn't had sex in a long time. And so I'm just ready to go, right? And we get to the hotel room and it's like the nicest hotel room I've ever been in. And he's not a very tall. Well, he's exactly my height. So I guess he was, you know, tall or average. And it was like the best sex I've had in such a long time. It was so good. And he was a very different kind of lover. He was not into the spanking or the choking or anything. He was into actually having a connection. And he would like look me straight in my eyes and actually like touch every part of me. And it was just a very different kind of love making, right? But that was just an awesome experience. And he was very into um, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? And so the whole weekend, he would just say, Well, what do you want to do now? And I thought, This is great. Like, th- I love this. Why can't I do this every weekend? And the next day, We got to a point where we went to the aquarium in the morning after brunch. And then afterwards, we went to go have lunch. And then he goes, well, what do you want to do now? Like, we could literally do anything. Do you want to go shopping? I was like, okay, that sounds pretty good, right? In my head, he goes, do you want to go? He likes the the for basketball. And he goes, they're playing in San Francisco or something. He's like, we can take a flight and make it. I was like, okay. And then he goes, or we can go back to the hotel for a bit, right? And so he gave me those three options. And the typical sugar baby would have said, let's go shopping, right? Mm -hmm. But my horny ass self said, let's go back to the hotel room. And I think that was till this day very worth it. Very worth it. But it was such a great experience. That night we, so even though he was the, the youngest, he would fall asleep after we had sex. So we would just take these like, cat naps after sex which was fine with me and we ended well, up Well, it takes a lot out of you well yeah you yeah, know it definitely took a lot out of, out of him but yeah we ended up having sex a total of five times ta- five or six times throughout those three or two and a half days but by the end of it i just kind of wanted more because he was so just wow amazing <laughs> and so till this day we keep in contact and he actually offered to fly me out next weekend to 
I don't remember where it was. He had said two places that he wanted to go visit. But yeah, so it's you, going you know, my fun. inbox is going to be blowing up with men wanting your number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I'm just terrified to travel with somebody I haven't met yet, though. I'm just really nervous. I think the FaceTime is a great, great way to really get an idea of who they are. And we what did that last night and he was quite the talker. He just wanted to tell me about his home in California mm -hmm. and his condo in las vegas on the strip he, that's where he was yeah. at the time and he was kind of showing me around and i mean he's like and i've got two masters so you don't have to worry that i don't i don't have expectations still you just never know yeah well you know one thing that i did notice on this trip was sometimes we would run out of things to talk about and there was just kind of that silence so if he's a talker that's perfect because you don't have to worry about that silence no, that he's a talker silence. and i'm a talker so that won't be a problem so this guy how did he gift you for spending a whole weekend he gave me a lot of gifts right like money gifts he he made his donation as we say right to mm -hmm. me can um, you tell us the amount it was fifteen hundred dollars which i felt there was you okay that's good. you know it was a good amount i looked up how much the ticket would have been if i bought it myself and it was like seven hundred dollars i thought okay that's you know balances out we're good yeah no it was it was a great time i feel like if even if he wouldn't have given me anything i would have been very very pleased mm -hmm. as i was nice so have you ever had any negative seeking experiences? And is seeking the only sugar set you're on? It is the only one. But now that you've mentioned all these other ones, I feel like I have to go try them out. I need you. reports on these sites because... Millionaire Match is not a sugar site. It is not supposed to be a sugar site. It's just more of a dating up site, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I have a habit of, if I'm going to go off the site with someone, I'm going to talk to them. I'm, I'm going to put them in my... Google voice number yeah. and I'm going to add their name in and a picture. When you screenshot their photo on Millionaire Match, they tell you to protect the privacy Ooh. of oh, our members. Yeah. Please do not screenshot photos. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And you have to click OK, but it still lets you screenshot. Because mm. I like to have a visual of who it is that's messaging yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if it notifies them that you screenshot I don't know, but them. I've screenshot two guys already off there. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get in trouble. Well, you would think they would be happy or excited that you screenshotted their picture, right? Yeah, like but they, there is some privacy issues. Okay. You know, yeah, you're, you're online dating. These guys are supposed to be in high positions. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're dealing with, let's say, some kind of a politician or a CEO of yeah, a business, they, yeah. they may not want this information mm -hmm. out. But then yeah. again, they are on an online site. So mm -hmm. it's not that yeah. hard to figure it out. But so far, I am not hating that one. And I haven't really spent enough time on secret benefits to know if I like it, but I don't think I do. And I was on Tinder for like three days. I'm like, nope, I'm shutting it down. It yeah. sucks. Yeah. You can never go back to those. I was banned off Tinder. I can't go back on Tinder. How'd you get banned off Tinder? I was taking my sugar baby business to Tinder and I guess uh, one guy got really upset because I didn't want to go out with him. I just didn't want to go with him. And so he reported me and there goes Tinder. But well, what I find on Tinder and I still have the app. Once in a blue moon, I'll go start swiping, and it's ridiculous. I never make any matches, and the ones I do are usually, like, foreigners, mm -hmm. and I can tell that they're just, it's a scam. But most girls on there are trying to redirect you to their Instagram, is what I find. Mm -hmm. Any of the really attractive ones that you might swipe right on, here's my Insta, or here's my Snapchat, mm -hmm. and they want to direct you off the site. You know, I always go to their I check them out on Instagram or Snapchat and they never interact with you. They're just trying to get followers for mm -hmm. the most part. So I have a question for you. Okay. So as a woman, right? So I recently went on Bumble, right? I, okay. I decided to open it up because there was one particular person in the store that I wanted to match with. And so I, after I left the store, I was like, I'm not going to leave this parking space until I match with this person. So I created this whole account and I set the you know, space or, or what do you uh, mean distance? you were in the store and they told you they were on Bumble? No, no. I knew that they were on Bumble because they had liked my sister who was on Bumble. <laughs> and yeah. And so, and I was, oh, I was determined goodness. to get this person's interest. Right. So I went on Bumble and I created this account and I super liked them. And I found their account very quickly because it was within a mile radius. Right. 
and nothing comes midnight, nothing. I'm like, what is the issue? Like, what is happening? You know? And he had flirted with me in the store. So he knew who I was. He knew, you know, everything. And when nothing was happening the next morning, I wake up and I'm like, oh, I have to do something. Right. And so I look him up on Instagram and I find him and his profile is public. And I go into the profile and I see the stories. And like five minutes later, he's trying to follow me now. I have everything private. And so I accepted and then he messaged me and I was like, oh, well, I tried shooting my shot on Bumble, but that didn't work. And then they were like, oh, I haven't opened Bumble, you know, in a while. And then they opened in like five minutes later, I get a notification that said, yeah, you matched. Oh, there you go. And so, yeah. and so being back on Bumble is a very interesting experience because I'm not there to date, you know? I mean, that guy caught my attention and I wanted him and, you know, it happened and okay, but... I don't plan on personally dating someone at this time, right? However, I have noticed I set my age range from 40 to 70. Mm -hmm. The amount of men that are on there that are very wealthy, very good looking. And I mean, it's insane. I met one of them who we've been texting for the last two days and he lives in Fountain Hills and, you know, very wealthy person. And they just want to give you all this stuff he's like I want to take you shopping and I want to take you to dinner and I want to take you on these trips and I thought well great so we're going to dinner on Friday but it's you know I didn't know that I don't know why I hadn't thought about that is that something that you've done or or you do or that these men you know are into or I haven't I do set my age limits because I kind of have a plus or minus 10 rule and I set my age limits where I want them so Everyone who's hitting me up is, of course, age appropriate. Mm -hmm. I haven't noticed that any of them are significantly wealthy or educated. Not on Tinder. Mm. Uh, But I'm really not on Bumble or Hinge or any of those. Okay. Yeah, no. I've seen a lot of good stuff on Bumble. But Tinder, I'm like, why did I do this to myself? Yeah. (laughs) I did go to coffee. I think we all asked that. (laughs) With a little cutie off of there today. But, yeah, he's... mm, no, I don't think he's for me. Well, we've brought it up. He thinks he's for me. Uh, I'm we, like, I don't think uh, he is. We've brought it up so many times over the all the episodes that we've recorded that can you ever really go back? Once you've done sugar dating, can you ever really go backwards? It's, mm-hmm. really, it's tough, right? Very tough. It really is. Yeah. Even I my mean, last partner was just wealthy. I think you attract what you want. And that's what I always want. So that's what I normally always find. I don't think I've ever had the issue of of finding someone and they weren't, you know, like just in that sense. What's the longest uh, sugar relationship you've had so far? Um, The longest one that was like back and forth was maybe like a whole year. Mm -hmm. And they didn't live here. So they came for business like twice a month and I would see them every time they were here. So you weren't exclusive? No. It was just your longest one? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been exclusive? No. No, I have not yet met the one who has been able to fulfill everything I've needed. God, I was exclusive for three months and it was painful. Why? Because he just, he wasn't my person. He came on hot and heavy in the beginning, like Prince Mm -hmm. Charming. Yeah. Sweeping me off my feet. But then he persuaded me to move in and I soon discovered, oh dear God, we are not for each other. Even though he thought we were Mm -hmm. and he was devastated when I backed right on out of there. Yeah. There were just certain things I couldn't live with. And he was extremely wealthy Mm -hmm. and spoiled the hell out of me. Gave me anything and everything I wanted. He paid her rent for a year, which she rents from me. So I got a nice check out of it. (laughs) Yeah. But what was the thing that made you realize, like, I don't want to be here? It was communication. Our Mm -hmm. love languages were so different and he wasn't fulfilling what I needed. I wasn't getting words of affirmation. The physical touch was lacking. This is a great quote from my last guy. He said, you are hypersexual and I am 70 years old. I cannot keep up with you. <laughs> I was like, I am so sorry. I did not realize I was pressuring you mm-hmm. in the bedroom, but apparently I was. One of the biggest complaints that I hear from Lily, because we work together and we sugar date all day, every day, mm-hmm. or talk about yeah. it, is she seems to correlate that the wealthier the men are, the worse their communication skills and uh, their, their humility, their dating skills. They, Maybe because they just 
think they don't have to try on that end? I don't know. I think it depends on if they were born into money or if they made their own money. That's where I've seen a difference. Mm -hmm. What are you finding, Jennifer? For what? Like the way, let's say a traditional relationship would romance you and um, have some manners and Mm -hmm. some chivalry. Yeah. Do you find that with sugar daddies? With some of them, like this one very extremely respectful like wouldn't touch my boob until I put his hand on me Mm -hmm. um that was kind of different because usually you know if you're talking to someone and they know that the type of person that you are you know it's usually you meet and you know they do squeeze my tit you know I mean they go for it I've never really came across any that don't really communicate well but again another thing that I think personally is very important when I start talking to these men, the first couple of questions I ask is, well, what do you want from me? How much attention do you want from me? Do you want me to text you every day? Do you want me to text you once a week? What is it that you want, right? And everybody wants something different. Like this guy, we usually text every day, at least, you know, like five texts a day. But I definitely have come across the ones who are just always working and you just you know you don't hear from them until like the day before they want to see you and stuff like that so I've seen a good amount in that but there was one man who I remember he was just amazing he was beautiful and really tall and we met on the website on seeking and I remember I was at this date like an actual I think it was like a tinder date or something and it was so horrible that I did not want to be there. And so I made up an excuse. And I was like, you know what? Like I have to leave because my sister needs me or something like that. And I was like, okay, bye. And then I went to my car and I had a message from him, like a text message. And he said, what are you doing? It was like a Friday night. And I said, oh, I am actually doing nothing. I am very open to anything you have to offer. And so he goes, well, come over to my place. I went over to his house and it just happened to be right behind my family doctor's office. So I thought that was really interesting. But he was very respectful too. And he was very about talking about his money. He was one of those. I was just very about it. I have this, I have that. I remember I went in his room, his living room, and he had, it was like a trophy. And I was like, what is that for? You know, how did you win that? And he goes, Oh, the boys and I were at, I don't know where he said there's some sort of club, like, you know, like gentlemen's club, like where they all gather and, and talk, I guess. About gentlemanly <laughs> yeah. endeavors. <laughs> and so he said that they all bet $50,000 on a rat. They put the rats in like a line to race. And the rat that won, that's, you know, if that was your rat, you kept all of the money. And I remember I was very young at the time. Yeah, this is like my, I was still in the beginning of everything. He was throwing these numbers at me. and I I have questions. What? Where did they get the rats? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that was just like, that was one of those moments when I realized, oh, this is the type of man that I'm talking to. It was at the Billionaire's Boys Club. (laughs) I'm telling you, there are some really eccentric rich people out there. There are. They just don't know what to do with their money. a euphemism for weird as fuck. (laughs) You asked me about weird or bad experiences. Yeah, right? have you there had any? There was one experience where I actually legitimately felt like I was going to die. Oh, so do tell. It was this guy who had been talking to me. And surprisingly, I was actually up in, what is the place called where you go? And like, I was donating my time, right? Because my sister had to do some charity hours. And so we were over there packing food up at the, I don't remember what it's called, but at some place, right? Doing like a charity thing. And then... I get a text from him and he goes, we had been talking all that day, but I put my phone away when I was there and he goes, Hey, do you want to meet for a drink? It was Friday night. And I thought, why not? You know, he sent me the address to the bar. I get to the bar and he had texted me that he had all these cars. I'm very into cars. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. So if they have a nice car, we'll usually talk about the car. So we had talked about his cars and I thought, okay, like he's going to show up in one of his cars, right? He showed up in a Prius, first of all, right? And I'm like, maybe it's his daily driver. You know, you never know, <laughs> right? And He's concerned about yeah, the environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we are having a drink, and 
he was just he just gave you that vibe like like a creeper vibe very creepy would not stop staring at my boobs which usually I'm totally fine with I love that but I don't know that just something just felt off right and he was talking about himself the entire time which I usually don't care for I mean that's fine but he was very persistent on come back to my hotel room with me. And I was like, why do you have a hotel room if you live in Scottsdale? He was like, oh, no, I'm just staying there for the weekend, right? So just a lot of inconsistencies that yeah. were not matching up, right? Yeah. But at this point, I'm like, what am I going to say or do to get out of this, right? How old was this guy? This guy was young. He was like 29, 30, which was another thing that I was like, oh, maybe there's a reason this is, you know? And those are the worst ones on seeking. Those are the absolute worst ones. There's so many of them with a milf fetish that just think they need to be with an older woman too. Yeah. And so he said, you know, do you want to go back to my hotel room? And in that moment, I thought the easiest way to get out of this is to say yes. And so I said, okay, I'll go with you. I was like, I'll go in my car. You can go in your car. Uh He goes, okay, awesome. So he's like, I'm staying at the McCormick. And I was like, okay, great. Like, I'll see you there. And so we're both driving there, right? And so he knows I'm into cars, so he's, like, trying to race with me, right? And then out of nowhere, we get to a busy street, and I just take, like, a complete opposite direction. I just start, like, driving. I didn't even know where I was driving. I have no sense of direction, but I was like, I'm just trying to get as far away as I can from any Prius that I see. You're just trying to lose him. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And then he kept texting me and blowing up my phone. He was like, hey, I'm in the hotel. Like, where are you? I'm in the parking lot. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, block. Like, I just immediately blocked him. And that was probably the weirdest interaction I've had with anybody on that so website. So just your instincts told you that that would have been a bad yeah, decision. Yeah, That's 100%. Good. Yeah. And I think that was really the only bad experience I've had. Other than that, it has been nothing but good experiences. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Glad to hear it. <laughs> so what other... Wish I could say the same. <laughs> so how, how long were you on the site before you got into your serious relationship? You, you started at 18 and then what age? Yeah, I started at you? 18 and then at 21 was right when I got Okay, off. so you were on the site with Sugar Daddies for three years. Mm-hmm. We only talked about your very first one where you were a dom- dominatrix. Mm-hmm. What other encounters did you have there? Shortly after that, there was another man that wanted to be dominated. So I thought, okay, I now, know what I'm Was this doing. in your profile? Is that why they were coming to you? No, but in my profile, I have that I am ready for anything. And so <laughs> I really am ready for anything. I will try anything at least once, right? And I guess that's very inviting to these people, right? They feel like, oh, she was not going to judge me, uh, and okay. I'm not. So how many dick pics a day do you get? Oh, a lot, a lot. And I love them. That's the See, thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, thank you. I, that's, I, I wrote, like, written that down stop. because I wanted to ask you that question because I had the feeling that you actually invite them. Oh, yeah. Or these girls are like, stop already with the dick pics. Oh, yeah. No, no. They're like, I'm hard. I'm like, show me. Don't tell me. Show me. Oh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but this this other man, so he was actually a kickboxer. Is that what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's that was a thing. yeah, that was his thing, and he would like actually teach that right mm-hmm. kickboxing and like to professionals. And he was a very built man, and I remember he said it just completely threw me off guard. We were like talking, and everything was going great, and he's like, "Okay, well, I'm going to tell you now what I'm actually looking for." And I thought, "Okay, great," and he goes. I want a woman to tie me up. I was like, okay, that seems pretty simple, very doable. And he goes, you know, I have an older son who lives with me. He was like 18. He goes, and so we can't go to my place, but I can get us a hotel room and we can all just, we can meet there for your safety and my safety. And I thought, okay, great. So he booked the hotel room. And at this point in my life, I have this green backpack And in this magical green backpack, I have every sex toy that is important. And Viagra. And Viagra. Yeah, I have everything that you think. There is a 16-inch double-sided dildo in there. I mean, anything you could think of, it's in there, right? And so this was the beginning of the green backpack. I started it. I started collecting stuff and everything that I started purchasing or receiving gift um, gifts of sexual nature, I would put in that backpack. And so to go to this this hotel room with this guy, he wanted me to tie him up. So I went to the store and I bought some rope. 
And I thought, okay, like I can totally tie them up. And I was trying to watch videos of like the Boy Scout videos to learn how to do <laughs> like the knots. I didn't learn any of them, but yeah. I was able to somehow manage to tie him up. Mm-hmm. And at this point, so he walks in there. Well, he was already in there. And so I get there and I knock and he knows it's me and I walk in and, you know, first we sit down, we talk, we have a drink and everything, get to know each other a little bit more. And then he goes, are you ready? I'm like, are you ready? And we, he takes off his clothes and I take off my clothes and I'm like, okay, here we go. And so I start tying him up and he wasn't into the pegging, but he was into me taking control. Like he literally just laid there. That was all he did. And I just did the work. Um, but then with that man specifically at the time I was 18. So like halfway through, I see like, there's something wrong, right? Like there's something making him uncomfortable. And I'm like, and so I stopped. I said, hey, like, is there something that I'm doing that you're not liking? Like what, what's wrong? He starts tearing up. And I'm like, what, what's wrong? Like, please tell me what's wrong. And he goes, oh, you just remind me of my son, my 18 year old son. Oh, Cause you're 18. God. I'm like, oh my no. gosh. Are you really bringing that up right now? We're like, 20 minutes in and he's like yeah I'm sorry I just I can't I can't go through with this I'm like can I put a blindfold on you like we're already here like I I needed to be (laughs) I needed to get pleasure too so I was like you know like you know and he was like no no I just can't I keep thinking about my son and that was it he I untied him and he put his clothes on he paid me and he left and till this day I've never heard from this man again Hmm. yeah so age gap can matter yeah. it really can he really thought he would be able to get over it but i guess i my plus and minus to. 10 rule i'm pretty much set on that like i don't want to be with little boys and i don't want to be with grandpas i just don't it is not sexy to me mm-hmm. now you really enjoy these experiences do you talk allowance up front you know, I don't think I've ever done allowance. I'm very pay per meet. That or, just works yeah, for me. But do you talk about the, the prior donation to meeting? up front? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Okay. Yeah. Before even meeting with these men, you okay. know, we talk about what we want and, you know, what I want. And yeah, we always, there was maybe one time where, well, there were a couple of times where, you know, they ask you, well, what amount are you looking for? What works for you? And there have been some men that I've liked so much and that the connection has been so good. And I'm like, you decide. I give them the numbers that I usually work with. And I'm I'm like, you know, this is what I've done in the past. But you decide ultimately what you want me to have, what you think I'm worth. That's my favorite phrase. (laughs) And they love that because, you know, they go crazy. Um, So, yeah, that's that's I I always talk about that. part. I know that is an issue that many of our our guests and our our co-hosts struggle with is because it's uncomfortable for them to talk numbers. Mm-hmm. And and um, for, for, for most people, it's uncomfortable. Some yeah. have no problem at all. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So Yeah, there was one guy who he, I, I don't know why. Usually, I always, that's one of the first things we talk about, right? I have no idea why, for some reason, just completely forgot about asking him that question mm-hmm. one time. And it was, it came up to the day, like two days before he was supposed to fly in. And we were, we had just finished FaceTiming and I was like, you know what? I should ask like right now, like I, I need to ask sooner rather than later. So I texted him. I was like, Hey, I was like, kind of awkward, but I have to ask you this. I was like, we did meet on a sugar baby website. And so that is what I'm expecting, you know, and I hope that if you're expecting what you want to get what you want, then, you know, we have to talk about this. And thankfully, his response was, oh, yeah, totally. Like, I, I, we can definitely talk about that. He's like, let's talk about it once and then never talk about it again. I was like, that works with me. And so he asked me, what have you normally done? And so I told him the amounts I've worked with. And then I said, well, what have you previously done in the past? And he told me his amounts and he's like, what is comfortable for you? And I was one of those where I was like, you know, you decide. Mm -hmm. And in that moment he responded with a number. I was like, okay, we're good. And then we just never talked about it again. Yeah. Now you mentioned to me also that you're feeling that the site has changed. Oh yes. Yes. Let's get to that. Yeah. How so? 
I was really afraid that coming in back into the game that I was no longer going to be wanted because of my age. <laughs> at 25. Yeah, oh, at 20. gosh. <laughs> I, in my head, the, you know, the majority of these men are looking for the younger, the better, right? That's what I was. That's where I my, think we're finding yeah. the opposite of that. And now I, it is definitely the opposite. I mean, men are looking for women who know what they want and what they're doing, not someone who is asking them, well, what do you want to do or what, you know? And so the biggest thing I've found on the website now is that more than ever, you now find profiles where the money portion, where it asks how much they're worth and how much they make is like under 100,000. Yeah. Like, what are you doing here? This yeah. is not for you. This is not your playing field. Like, I don't think they realize what is, what goes into a sugar baby experience. Just even dating is expensive. Yeah. I mean, yeah. taking a girl out to a nice dinner, a few drinks, or maybe an event. I mean, it sets me back three to $500. Mm-hmm. And that's before we even get to an allowance or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, the biggest thing I've noticed is so many of these men nowadays add on their profile, not looking for anything transactional, will not give you money, will give you mentorship. Yeah. What's that about? How am I going to pay my car with mentorship? You know, like it's what? (laughs) That's like a bonus. There are girls on there that want mentorship, but I mean, I certainly don't need mentorship at my age. Yeah, but mentorship or like networking, I understand networking. I've Mm -hmm. met a ton of amazing people that I still keep in contact and have been able to do certain things of because of things they've been able to do. But I mean, or when they put, you know, I don't want it to feel transactional. That's always really funny to me because at the end of the day, this is a transaction that we're doing. You know, whether you like it or not, that's, that's what it is. And there's ways that you can talk about it where it doesn't feel like that but I guess a lot of these newer people on there have this notion of pay per meet being like a prostitute thing that's immediately Mm -hmm. what they think of and it's like yeah Yeah. that's not what so do you have a job I do I have a Monday through Friday insurance agent job I'm actually a very normal person yeah I have my insurance job bought my first home at 22 Good for you. Um, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so it's I have a very normal life, but thankfully my schedule is very flexible to where, you know, I'm able to be right here right now or just leave whatever I want. So it works out. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Jennifer, it has been a real pleasure having you in. This hour goes very quickly, doesn't very it? Very quickly. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have a feeling we could talk for a few more hours. I but, for, um, by one of my favorite experiences, which you'll have to hear later, is the time that I had to go. There were three men that were coming into town. Well, tell us. Go ahead and tell us about it. There were three men that were coming to town, and they were staying at the Talking Stick Resort. Mm-hmm. They were coming for some business thing, and they said, "Do you have any friends?" That's when I realized none of my friends want to do this. None of them want to share these experiences with me. So I said, "Well, unfortunately, I don't, but I can take on all three of you." And I did, in fact, take on all three of them. It was a very exhausting night, but it was very well worth it. Okay, I need details. Whoa. Was it yeah. one at a time and the other ones weren't in the room or they were all there? It was like we started all together and then individually finished each one of them off. So they all got an experience of a, a foursome, I guess, but then they also got their own. To one finish. on one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. While the others were, you know, and these were friends. Pleased. Yeah, they were like, and they, they were friends. Awkward they worked in finance. Each other naked. I guess they, had, they. I think they must have done it before at oh. some point because they were very extremely comfortable with each other and their penises out. Lily. So I, I have never done that, girl. Oh wow. Twenty-five. Yeah. Ah, that's. She just that's Jennifer's amazing. just felt comfortable. <laughs> You know, since the get go, yeah, and yeah, that's just she's just taking the bull by the horns. That's what you find sexy. I is do trying mm-hmm. new things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, we really appreciate you coming in and sharing these stories. Uh, this is such a great episode. You never know how they're going to turn out, and I have a feeling this one's going <laughs> to this one's going to go through the roof. So. Thanks for uh, taking, you did this during your lunch break, I'm assuming. I just said I'm leaving early. You got to go back to work? (laughs) No, no, no work for the day. More play. Oh, there you go. someone I have to go see. Oh, I'm doing sushi tonight with somebody off of Millionaire Match. Very fun. And I'm really excited about it. He lives in Fountain Hills. He's got three Ferraris and he seems real nice. We've Mm -hmm. talked on the phone and 
I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we all have plans. That's that's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun day. I'm meeting someone from Bumble that I had seen on Seeking, but they got kicked off of Seeking. So that's going to be interesting. Oh. Well. I got kicked off Seeking. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. going to have to it come back more often than not. Come yeah. back and tell us how that yeah. went. Yeah, I'm excited. But I'm back on there, so <laughs> screw you. Anyway, Lily. Stick it to the man. Thanks for joining <laughs> us today. This was a great episode. And if you'd like to share your crazy sugar dating stories, questions, or comments, go to our website at secretsofasugardaddy.com and follow us on Instagram at the same name. And don't forget to visit our website. Click on the link on the bottom on OMGS. It's Thanks a great for me. course that you can uh, learn how to please a woman properly. And it's good for women too. Men or women could take that course. So I highly recommend that one. And uh, yeah, Jennifer, come back and see us soon. Will do. Will do. Thanks okay. a lot for having me. Until next episode. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com.